Hey guys, super excited about this week. We have some really awesome new babies that just shed out and we're looking forward to show them to you. You're probably noticing we have a different background. It's because we are in the middle of Tinley Park, Chicago show prep and we're super excited about that. But we're gonna bring you some details about that on the next video. So looking forward to it. Let's check out some awesome babies. Okay, so we have this really awesome clown pied clutch that hatched. And this is a leopard clown pied and a pastel leopard clown pied. We're gonna look at all the babies, but they're just super amazing. It's the combination of pretty much the world's most popular two recessive genes. The pairing on this was a super leopard clown pied to a pastel pied het clown. And so you see here we have a combination of, everything is gonna be leopard automatically. So this is a leopard clown pied. And I just love how crazy the pattern is on this combo, just, just really amazing. And not just that, you know, with any kind of leopard pieds, typically one issue you run into real commonly is that they go super high white. Um, but I've been working on this just for years and years and years, trying to keep back the lowest white pieds, trying to work all my, my pied stuff towards things that have plenty of pattern to work with. Because when you're layering on these combos and pieds, we want just as much pattern as possible to be able to create all this really awesome paint jobs. And so this is just an excellent example. You see that crazy leopard coming through. And what, how cool is it just to see a pied with a, cl a bright clown head? That is just super awesome. So the other visual on the clutch is this pastel leopard clown pied. Um, and the cool thing is, is that it is, it is fairly high white, but also some really good you know, amount of saddles going down the body. Um, like I've said in previous videos, it's kind of interesting that pieds typically, when they have um, pattern, it is typically almost always mostly front loaded to the front end. The other thing that's really common is to have a little patch of pattern at the tail, but the head is never white, um, unless you put a combo in that forces it to be white. That's really, really an interesting thing about pieds in general. And the amazing thing is, is that this has a couple of really faint saddles in there that are just starting to color up a little bit. You could barely even see that before it first shed, but what an incredible animal that turned out to be. And I believe these both ended up being girls. So next one in is a pastel leopard pied. Again, a great pattern distribution, some nice, you know, saddles, you know, surrounded by white, just excellent. Now in the pastel leopard pies, leopard is often really, really, really hard to ID in a pied, just typically because they, they typically make them really, really high white. And the other thing is, is that the leopard pattern doesn't come through that much. And honestly, if it wasn't for the head of this animal, it'd be hard to ID leopard in it. But the head is a really big giveaway on a pastel leopard pied because that, that head is very, very untypical. And so anything that's pastel and leopard in a pied, you're typically looking for that unique kind of washed out um, head stamp on there that tells you exactly what you're looking at. This one, excellent, excellent pattern distribution. Again, a very unique head. Um, the other thing you see a lot on leopard pieds, and this is not a, a sign that you can absolutely take to the bank, but typically a pie wouldn't have that extra black marking there below the main saddle. He says it has it on both sides down here as well. That's something the leopard will oftentimes bring in. They'll also bring in some of the shattering sometimes of the pattern. This one has it as well, you see down here at the bottom but just really, really awesome clutch. It's really cool to see such a, an amazing collection of powerhouse animals in one clutch. And they look so good next to each other. Just, just this comes from building really high quality stock and really refining it over time. You know, they say in this industry, it's true in all business actually, you're supposed to pay yourself first. And that's so true in the ball python world is to pay yourself first in the sense of keeping back the very, very, very best high quality stock for your collection because that's only going to continue to reap major rewards going forward. Okay, so these are another clown pied clutch and didn't get the kind of crazy odds on it, but really, really some insanely awesome animals that I've been shooting for. Um, here we have a leopard yellow belly clown het pied and then a yellow belly clown pied. These are so cool. Okay, so these animals, I'll show you the, all the animals from the clutch, but they're just incredible. We'll kind of work at them one at a time. So this is the yellow belly clown pied and the pairing to make these was an orange dream leopard yellow belly pied head clown to a clown head pied. 
Um, so we had, you know, really, we had a great pairing. It really, really, really should be good odds. And honestly, we did get pretty good odds, but this was the only clown pied in the pairing. Um, just really incredible, though, the color on that. Yellow Belly is one of the absolutely fundamental bedrock jeans and pieds in general because it brings out so much orange and it really messes with the pattern and gives it very dramatic edging and brightness, and it's so key. Um, so this is such a really, really awesome animal, and this was a girl really, really excited about that. Second one here is a leopard clown, leopard yellow belly clown, 100% hat pied. Um, so leopard clowns are pretty well known now. JKR, you know, we, we definitely pioneered the leopard clown project, and it's really, really cool to see where it's all going. But yellow belly is really hard to ID in this. I'm going to show you a couple here. Okay, so you see here, you know, leopards a lot of times will have these red kind of spots on the side, leopard clowns. But the difference on the yellow bellies is that it makes the whole belly kind of have this really kind of shattered um, patterning all along the edges and also kind of in the interior of the belly. You don't typically see that at all. Plus the entire belly, instead of being relatively white, has this entire kind of the same yellow color from the sides just continues right on. That's something you really have to get an eye for. I can, I can talk about it all day, but it's really, really hard to explain it in words. It's something you, you learn by intuition having hatched a few of these animals. So the amazing thing is, is that some of the siblings to these, although we didn't get an orange dream clown pied in this clutch, there's some absolutely insane babies. This is a orange dream leopard yellow belly pied 100% hat clown. Um, now just looking back to the earlier part of that video, you see we have the extra little line of black here coming in from the leopard. I'm trying to tell you how to OD, ID leopard in this animal. The other thing is a very highly unique head pattern there. Really, really cool to see that. It really pops and it still has a ton of pattern even with leopard and all these different genes in it. Really, really amazing pattern distribution. So excited to hold this animal back, this is a girl. Side by side here, you can see the difference. This is a regular orange dream het pied, no leopard, no yellow belly. So you see he doesn't have those that heavy um, edging on the body. Like see how this, this has really, really rough, I'm trying to keep our escapees in, has really, really rough edging on the side that is indicative of yellow belly. Also the extra color boost. Really the color boost you're seeing between these two is just yellow belly. And that's really amazing. Chase, you gonna grab that one there. Yellow belly is incredible. Of course, Orange Dream itself. The two together are just insane. I love that head pattern that Leopard brings in as well. So a couple more babies in the clutch that have shed. That is, this is a Leopard yellow belly, double head clown pied. Excellent little breeder, potential breeder down the road. And then here we have a, here I'll let you hold on to those since they wanna leave. Here we have a leopard orange dream pied het clown. So again, we're gonna compare it back to the, the yellow belly version. You see the color difference. Pretty awesome. One more baby in the clutch. Just insane. All right guys, so this may be a little controversial, but this is something that I've been thinking of a lot about lately um, and I've had a couple of situations where it's put it in the front of my mind. Um, this is how much is too much to pay for a snake? I guess maybe that's that's the entire question. Um, so I, context is really important here. So I'm looking in the context of somebody who's trying to build an amazing collection or is not just looking for pets or whatever. They're looking for someone who's actually trying to, either as a business or just as a goal towards what they want to produce, and that's what they're looking at. So there's been a couple times recently where I'll, um, I have a customer who's asked for a specific animal or asked for a 
type of animal and I'll make a suggestion to them. I'll be like, all right, here's, here's an option that I, I think might be what you're looking for. Um, and sometimes the response will come back and it'll be, all right, how much is it? If the price is right, I'll get it. Okay, so, and that's, man, we all are budget conscious and we all have a limit to what we can spend, I get that. So, but I'll, all I'm gonna try to do here is just give you a little bit of a different perspective. And that is that if the animal is the right animal for you, if it's the one you need, if, it, if you know it's the right fit, it's hard to overpay for that animal. It's really hard to overpay for that animal. I know several situations where I have paid double retail for an animal because I really, really wanted it and it was the right thing. It was a fantastic financial decision to get it because it was the right animal. And the flip side of that is there is no good deal that is ever worth getting an animal that's not right for you, period. If you're trying to build something, getting some kind of like middle measure, something that wasn't quite what you're looking for, that doesn't really push you where you want to go, that doesn't really do it, who cares if it's a good deal? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Um, and the reverse is true too. If it's the right animal, unless the price is astronomical ripoff, it's really, really hard to overpay. Um, so I think maybe, you know, obviously finance are definitely a constraint on people, you know, even on me. Finances are always a constraint. You always have to consider it. However, look at things from a, a bigger perspective of, can I afford not to have that animal with the goals that I have? All right, hope you enjoyed that. Really excited to bring you those awesome babies. And next week, I just wanna give you a little preview. We have a short video coming out about genetics and it's gonna be one of those kind of in-depth videos, um, just going through some of the numbers and how some of this genetics works is really, really interesting. And then towards the end of next week, we're gonna have the first of our Tinley preview videos. Super excited about it. Can't wait to see you there. See you next week.